Oh yeah, by the blue flame. Okay, what I wanted to show you guys, okay, is why this tool makes safe waxers. I don't care what kind of wax you use or how you fill your shell or whatever. The number one issue with waxers is you've got to make sure that your wax slug thing doesn't fall out of your hull. And I don't know if you can see that clearly. I hope you can. This leaves the crimp intact. It traps the gubbins, traps the power piston and cup assembly in the shell. Now I'm going to show you, see if I got one here that I've clipped. I've got a box of things here that I've, okay, for instance, okay, here's, here's a 20 gauge. It's clipped, okay? Now, as you can see, there's nothing that's going to keep that power piston in there. I don't know if I can get my finger in there. My finger's kind of big. I need a clipped 12 gauge here. Uh, I don't know if I can get that. Hang on one second, guys. Yikes. Interesting. Yeah, I can't lay this camera down like I used to lay my other one. There we go. See? See how that's coming out? See that? Oh! I had it! Man. Oh, there we go. Okay, look. I don't care because I don't have a 20 gauge gun, so that's a shotgun powder or whatever. But see, here, here's a one piece power piston cup assembly, and as you can see, it just slides in and out of there, okay? I mean, easily. See that? It just slides in and out. If your wax shrinks because it's cold or because you didn't superheat it until it was fuming and producing explosive vapors or whatever, when you put this in your shotgun and you're cycling your action, whack, and you've got, you know, you're rapidly cycling in a pump shotgun, you could slide your puck down into your barrel. Then when you fire it, you're creating a pressure zone which the gun is not designed for. Or worse yet, you, you, you have one hung up in there, you put another one in there, now you've got one down the barrel, you've got one there, or whatever. That's why you've got to be super careful when you're clipping the entire end off the shell, and you have to test each one of your rounds by shaking it and seeing if you can get it to come out. Whack it, you know? Put your hand against the table like this and go, and see if you can get that thing to, look at that. It's, see how it's sliding out? I'll, put, I'll do it again. This is important, guys. Look at that, see how it's sliding out? If that sucker slides out in your shotgun, you could have a catastrophic failure, okay? That's why I created this tool. This tool traps the power piston cup assembly by keeping that crimped bead intact. Okay, it's not going anywhere, guys. I don't care what kind of wax you put in there. Now, there's like a little tiny lip in there that's going to get, like, it's going to make like a stop for the wax. The wax is going to go right up to the top here, and there's this little bit of plastic that's kind of coming out at an angle that's going to keep your wax from falling out. You should still check every round you make, okay? It's your responsibility. You're making the ammo. You've got to check it. But I'm trying to make tools and supplies that make this easier. That's what this is all about, guys. That's why I test every single one of them to make sure it's making perfect little bungholio dimes, as 7410 Ray would say. Making perfect little bungholio dimes and leaving that crimp bead intact. As you can see, I test every one of mine. I go through a lot of shells doing this, guys. This is a speed loading grid board. The purpose of this, okay, you see the little roundovers? I'm not used to holding this camera this way. I'm sorry if it was all crooked all the time, guys. I'm sorry. New camera. Thanks, Juggalo. See this? Okay. You shove them in there. You shove them right in the hole and you push down on them like that. You fill the whole grid board with 25 of them. You flip it over. Okay. This is protective paper on here. Peel the paper off, guys. See that? It's flush with the top of the board. Now what you do is you take a bent spoon and you pour wax and shot into each one of these puppies. Okay. And you let it mound up a little bit, the wax will shrink down. It'll almost make like looks like a little uh, hurricane funnel when it shrinks. It'll kind of shrink down a little bit. Wait for it to cool, then you put your finger right onto the wax, and you can usually pop them out that way, or you can just flip it over and break them free like that. Now, my wax is slightly pliable and tacky, so you can push it down like that if you want to to make them all nice and pretty. Make sure you do not have any pellets sticking up. 
out of the wax. It can cause a primer strike on the primer if you're in a tubular magazine. So make sure there's no little beads. The easiest way to do that is when you're filling it, is to keep them a little bit low and then cap them off with pure wax so there's no way there could be a primer strike. That is your safest way to go with these guys. Okay? And no, I didn't slam my fingernail. This is still black paint, which I cannot seem to get off of me. I'm probably going to have to use some nail polish to remember to get that off of me. So anyway, guys, the speed loading grid board. What's the purpose of it? Okay? It makes sure that the wax doesn't run down the sides of your hulls. And it lets you load 25 of these babies in about five minutes. No problem. Then when you pop them out, you've got nice clean shot shells. You've got hulls with no plastic, with no wax all over them, right? And they're all perfectly level and keeps you uniform results. I mean, if you're reloading a lot of ammo, why do you want to make it hard on yourselves? You know, you should use tools. You should create tools. Why would you want to cut every single shell by hand? You know, some guys say, oh, you don't need this tool. Just put a 5 8 inch hole saw in your drill press and you can just cut the centers out of each shell. Well, how many people have a drill press and how many people are going to sit there and hold a shotgun shell underneath a spinning, extremely dangerous and sharp hole saw and just touch it to it, touch it to it, and touch it to it? I mean, that's crazy to even think of, you know. But that's what some guys say to me when they say, oh, well, that's the way you should do it. Well, I don't think so. This is, this is the safest tool I've come up with. Plus, it's a beautiful tool. And this is your user interface, guys. Why shouldn't your user interface be beautiful and, and fun to handle? That's why I, I, I trace out a profile on it. I cut it out on my bandsaw. I sand it. I route it. Everything so that it's a nice thing to hold in your hand. It's something beautiful to look at. And, it, and it's just a nice thing to have. And uh, it works properly. It's got an easily replaceable utility blade. You take these two screws off, put a new blade in, or flip the blade over. It's only using about 3 sixteenths inch of the tip of this blade. So you get two uses out of every blade. Now, I, uh, the reason I'm saying all these things, guys, is because I kind of overlook the fact, you know, because I do this all the time. So I, I kind of overlook the fact that some guys don't know put all my tools back that's one thing I gotta keep training myself get those tools put back is I gotta remember that not everybody knows what the heck these things are for or how to use them or, or, or how to use them safely so the basic process is, is you put a shell in here you twist it you dump it out okay you make sure there's no crud in there you put the next one in you twist it you dump it out you do 25 of them you put 25 of them in here you flip it over you pour all the shot that you collected into a pan with some wax then you load them all with like a bent spoon, so it's kind of the spoon's a little narrower on the end, so you can just, you know, get them in the shells. You know, a big fat spoon, it's just going to pour all over the place. Let them cool, pop them out, rebox them, and they're good for as long as you want, man. Just like regular shotgun, you just rebox them right in the box, and they'll be there waiting for you when you need them. So I hope that helps you guys. I know these videos are a little long, but some of this material, you know, I can't just, I can't just rush through it because it's safety related. I want you guys to be safe doing this stuff. I want it to be fun, and I want to get more people to do it because this is a very cheap, inexpensive self-defense round, and it's ammo that's easy to find right now. All right, guys, I hope that did something for you. We'll find out, huh?